Margaret Cavendish, at that time Margaret Lucas, was born in the year 1623 near Colchester, England. She was the youngest of eight children and unfortunately was never able to know her father due to his death when she was an infant. As a child of royalty, she was taught to read and write with her siblings. She received a general education on subjects that were suitable for a young woman at the time. Once Margaret had reached adulthood, she convinced her mother to allow her to become one of Queen Henrietta Maria's maids of honor. As a member of the royal court, Margaret was awkward and shy. Many of the members of the court simply considered her socially inept and probably what we today would consider nerdy. Margaret intended to leave the side of the queen as soon as she could, but she couldn't get away because of her obligations to her family. Leaving would make her look even more like a fool. When the English Civil War broke out and the royal families were exiled, Margaret followed the Queen to France. While in exile, she met William Cavendish, a man who was much older than her, but who genuinely enjoyed her company. She enjoyed his company as well, and so they were married. This allowed Margaret to leave the Queen's side. In her newfound free time, Margaret wrote, Margaret was a philosopher, not a traditional scientist like we would suspect to see today. She was even recorded as condemning experimental science, saying that the tools of humans were imprecise. Having very little education beyond what her parents provided her, she wrote about topics she knew. She wrote about what it was like to be a woman in her time, and her place in society. She fought for equal rights for women and for better treatment of animals with her writing. This was unheard of during her time. Margaret's achievements in science weren't that amazing, but the fact that she was even able to consider herself part of the scientific community during this time is a feat unto itself. She was even allowed to attend meetings where Robert Boyle presented experiments to the Royal Society of London. Margaret's achievement wasn't so much that she was a groundbreaking scientist, but that she was a scientist, one of the first female autobiographers and one of the first science fiction writers. A list of some of her writings include Philosophical Fancies and Poetical Fancies, which is a book of her poems, Nature's Pictures Drawn by Fancy's Pencil to the Life, which is a book of her natural observations written in prose, Philosophical and Physical Opinions, which is a book on natural observations, and The Blazing World, which is a strange science fiction novel about an alternate universe that you can only reach through the North Pole.